There is no better loved picture of Jesus than the Good Shepherd. The picture of the shepherd is woven into the language and imagery of the Bible. In the Old Testament, God is often pictured as the shepherd and the people as his flock. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23 verse 1. He is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Psalm 95 verse 7. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100 verse 3. God's anointed one, the Messiah, is also pictured as the shepherd of the sheep. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Isaiah 40 verse 11. The Jews had a lovely legend to explain why God chose Moses to be the leader of his people. When Moses was feeding the sheep of his father-in-law in the wilderness, a young kid ran away. Moses followed it until it reached a ravine, where it found a well to drink from. When Moses got up to it, he said, I didn't know that you ran away because you were thirsty. Now you must be weary. And he took the kid on his shoulders and carried it back. And then God said, Because you have shown pity in leading back one of a flock belonging to a man, you shall lead my flock, Israel. The picture passes over into the New Testament, and Jesus is seen as the Good Shepherd. We read from John chapter 10, verses 1 through to 10. Very truly, I tell you, said Jesus, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, Jesus is the shepherd who will risk his life to seek and to save the one straying sheep. He has pity upon all the people because they are as sheep without a shepherd. His disciples are his little flock. And when the shepherd is smitten, the sheep are scattered. He is the shepherd of the souls of men and the great shepherd of the sheep. The relationship between sheep and shepherd is quite different in Palestine. In most Western countries, sheep are largely kept for slaughter, but in Palestine, largely for their wool. Thus, sheep are often with the shepherd for years and often have names by which the shepherd calls them. Usually, these names are quite descriptive. For instance, brown leg or black ear. Also, the shepherd went in front of the sheep and the sheep followed. And the shepherd went first to see that the path was safe. And sometimes 
the sheep had to be encouraged to follow. It is strictly too that the sheep know and understand the eastern shepherd's voice and that they will never answer to the voice of a stranger. In his book, H. V. Morton, where he writes in the steps of his master, he describes of the way in which the shepherd talks to the sheep. Sometimes he talks to them in a loud sing-song voice. And the first time I heard the sheep and goat language, he writes, I was on the hills at the back of Jericho. A goat herd had descended into a valley and was mounting the slope of an opposite hill. And when turning around, he saw his goats had remained behind to devour a rich patch of scrub. The goat herd then called out one word and gave a laughing kind of whinny. Immediately, a goat with a bell around his neck stopped eating and, leaving the herd, trotted down the hill across the valley and up the opposite slopes. The man, accompanied by this animal, walked on and disappeared round a ledge of rock. Very soon panic spread among the herd. They forgot to eat. They looked up for their shepherd. He was not to be seen. They became conscious that the leader with the bell at his neck was no longer with them. And from the distance came the strange laughing call of the shepherd. And at the sound of it, the entire herd stampeded into the hollow and leapt up the hill after him. Now the Jews did not understand the meaning of the story of the good shepherd. So Jesus plainly and without concealment applied it to himself. We read from the passage. And Jesus began by saying, I am the door. In this parable, Jesus spoke about two kinds of sheepfolds. In the villages and town themselves, there were communal sheepfolds where all the village flocks were sheltered and when they returned home at night. These folds were protected by a strong door of which only the guardian of the door held the key. It was to that kind of fold that Jesus referred to in John 10, verses 2 and 3. But when the sheep were out on the hills in the warm season and did not return at night to the village at all, they were collected into sheepfolds on the hillside. These hillside sheepfolds were just open spaces enclosed by a wall. In them, there was an opening by which the sheep came in and went out, but there was no door of any kind. What happened was that at night the shepherd himself lay down across the opening and no sheep could get in or out except over his body. In the most literal sense, the shepherd was the door. That is what Jesus was thinking of when he said, I am the door. Through him and through him alone, all humanity find access to God. Through him, said Paul, we have access to the Father, Ephesians 2.18. He said to the writer to the Hebrews, He is the new and the living way, Hebrews 10 verse 20. Jesus opens the way to God. And until Jesus came, humanity could only think of God as the best and a stranger and as at worst an enemy. But Jesus came to show all of us what God is like and to open the way to him. Jesus is the door through him through whom alone entrance to God becomes possible for humanity. Jesus claims that he came, that men might have life and might have it more abundantly. The Greek phrase used for having it more abundantly means to having a superabundance of a thing. Friend, to be a follower of Jesus, to know who he is and what he means, is to have a superabundance of life. When we try to live our own lives, life is dull. It's a dispirited thing. 
But when we walk with Jesus, there comes a new vitality, a superabundance of life. It is only when we live with Christ that life becomes really worth living and we begin to live in the real sense of the word. Amen.